Hello, diamond painting friends. Welcome in. Lazy Retired Granny here. Today is Saturday, April 1st, 2023. It's about a little after 7 a.m. here in Salem, Oregon. It's a rainy, wintry day outside. So Ellie and I will be staying inside today, but I'm starting my spring cleaning marathon today. I hope to get it all done. I am, yeah, besides the cleaning, I'm organizing, I'm moving some stuff around. And making my little space more homey. Right now it looks like a giant craft room. A disorganized one at that. If anybody saw this place, they'd go, oh my gosh, she lives like that. <laughs> Not that it's dirty, it's just cluttered. I'm tired of the clutter. I don't like clutter. So I'm inspired today. So I did this part of the canvas. And, oh my gosh, so much confetti. And so I decided I better start doing smaller sections. So I did this large section and oh boy. So I cut it in half. So on this side, I'm doing um, a small section. But I thought I would just jump on here real quick and do a whip and chatter and before I start my day. And generally what I do when I have these days that I clean, of course it be a long time for this one. I do a little bit and then I sit and I diamond paint for a bit and then I go back to doing the job at hand. I have to rest. Especially when I'm moving furniture around and the old back isn't what it used to be. So I'll generally work for, you know, 45 minutes, an hour, and then I'll sit down and diamond paint for 15 minutes, or at least do one color. Okay, I move, need to move the camera a little bit. Do this section down here. Yes, yeah, so I'm hoping to get all my yarn sorted out and organized. And I'm going to move my desk back where it used to be. And then I'm going to do a good vacuuming of 
as I'm moving furniture around, get underneath stuff and get all those dust bunnies. And give the floors a good mopping again. Yeah, around here I got to mop all the time with Ellie coming in and out with the muddy paws. Yeah, I want to move my desk back where I'm facing the sliding glass doors. And I can see out. My desk is huge. And I sit it <clears throat> behind the couch. So the couch is on the other side, and it faces the sliding glass doors also. I like to be able to sit on the couch and while I'm knitting and watching TV and look outside. <clears throat> See what's going on which isn't a whole lot I can see the street and when Ellie starts barking at something I can see out and see what all the commotions about usually it's the Amazon truck or the UPS guy or FedEx I got all the threes down here. Let's see if I can put the rest of the threes in this little vial. Now I had them, my extras in a tray, using them up. Oh yeah, that'll fit nicely in there. So now my vial is full. Throw that paper away. Yay! I'm going to go get some coffee, so I'm going to put you on hold for, uh, for a minute. Okay, made it back. Got my coffee. This is my last cup of coffee for the morning. Okay, what do I want to do next? Do I have any fours? Oh, there's some more threes. Oh, brother. How could I miss those right in front of my eyes? I usually do the darker colors when it's like this, so I think I'll go to teas. Let's 
see how far that gets me. Yeah, with all my projects today, I don't know how much diamond painting I'm going to get at. Oh, I'm making progress on Outlander book. She has now gone back in time. She hasn't quite figured out what's going on. I tried to imagine, oh my gosh, if that happened to me. <laughs> to go back to the 1700s. And apparently they talk different than what we do today. Well, obviously. Um, yeah, and where she lands up at, I need to move this over just a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, and she she was um, a nurse, the lady who went back in time. And these people have no idea what she's talking about um, in medical terms and whatnot. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of interesting makes you think so i'm slowly making my way through the book <laughs> very slowly i do know what happens next because i am reading the um outlandish companion to the book by the author and I'm only doing I'm reading small sections ahead till I get to that part only so I kind of understand what's going on this isn't the kind of book that I generally read so I don't want to be too confused But I'm enjoying it. It's um, very descriptive. I'm curious if they ever say anything about her husband. I know nothing about this series or whatnot. All I know is that she goes back in time. So I don't know if the story takes you to what her husband's doing, if he's looking for her or, or what's going on. Or if this is just going to be her story. But they're very long books. Whew. I think I got all the teas. Not very many of them. I think I'll do the F's next. Twelve. 
Those are bright, kind of an off-white sip of coffee. <clears throat> Has anybody else read the Outlander books? Did you like them? I generally, generally like cozy mysteries. Hopefully this book does a story and doesn't get too graphic. Yeah, this is really out of my norm. I like lighthearted books, and I think this is, may not be that way. You know, I don't know. If it gets out of my comfort zone, I'll just stop reading it. There's plenty of other books out there to read. <laughs> So, what diamond paintings are you guys doing? Mary was saying she's got a big order, so she's going to be busy with that. All her, I think, accessories and goodness. It's hard not to buy all the accessories that you like um, all at once. But I know for me... I bought, once I knew I was going to like the craft, then I slowly built up my inventory of accessories. Not that I have a lot. Um, I bought a light pad, and the first light pad that I bought was super small. I still have it. I think I've shown it on here. And it still works and everything and is good for small paintings. But then once I knew what kind of painting I wanted to do, I bought a bigger 
um, light pad. And that light pad never worked correctly. I struggled with that thing. It was just, ugh. So my son went online and said, this is what you need rather than that. So I got this light pad, which I've been super happy with. And I had a different artist board to begin with. It was small and really wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. So then I found this one. And have been using it ever since. Yeah, it's been well used. But for me, and my age and whatnot, looking directly at the canvas is so much better than leaning over a canvas to work on it. And some people, you know, they prefer to lay it flat on a table and work on it. It's all in your preferences. And I've been doing it such a long time on this canvas that to lay it down, it was hard for me to do those um, coasters because I couldn't put it up on the board very good. Although I did, but... But yeah, I've I've experimented over the years with my diamond painting and once I really settled into a a way that I liked and I watched a lot of YouTube videos and whatnot and some of those people get real elaborate with their diamond paintings and I thought, you know, this is just a hobby and something I want to do for fun and I don't want to spend thousands of dollars on something, you know, on a painting and framing it and all that stuff. Although my first painting said I did... I went to the thrift stores and found frames, you know, for a couple bucks and then came home and framed them myself. I put, you know, the protection over the canvas, the spray, and then um, put them in frames. And then I thought, you know, as many as what I'm going to do, I cannot frame all of these. And some of them was just for fun. You know, I didn't want them framed. So then I came up with this brilliant idea to put them in a portfolio. So I got those. And I was cutting them out and putting washi tape, tape around them. And then... Um, putting them in the, the sleeves. But the washi tape wasn't sticking very good. So, uh, why am I doing this? They're just going in a folder. They do not need to be decorated. So now I just throw them in there. Yeah, things from when I first started diamond painting to now, I've really changed a lot. I wish I could show you that, my first diamond painting video. I got to figure that out. I got to ask my son about that. 
because I would love to share it on here. I tried, but it didn't work. Yeah, all my, my first diamond painting videos are all on my Facebook page. And then I switched over to YouTube. But yeah, when I watched that first video I did of my diamond pinning, oh my gosh, I was cracking up laughing. Back then, I didn't know a whole lot about YouTube, so... And I just happened upon one YouTuber that, um, but she was just getting too, too much for me. And, and I won't name names or anything, it just... She's a very nice lady and all that. It's just, I guess when you have an endless amount of money in your bank account, you can do all that stuff. But yeah, it was just too high end for me. And a few other issues so but then Ross it smells like you're going to start doing diamond painting and that opened up a whole new world to me he is so down to earth that um, it's like okay I can relate to this So, in my early years, I really credit him with showing me where to buy diamond paintings and economical ones and more along what I wanted to do with my diamond painting craft. He does um, not only diamond painting, but he's more into yarn. And I don't, I know he took down all of his videos and just started re -rec or recording again. So I don't think those early diamond painting videos are on there. Yeah, about a year ago, he deleted everything. Just some hateful people out there, and he had had enough. And he just recently, within the last year, started videoing again. It was a sad time for me when he stop doing videos because I've been watching him for so many years and uh, 
but he's back. He's, um, like I said, mostly. Oh, I am at 30 minutes. I can't believe 30 minutes went by already. I can only video for 30 minutes. So, okay. I'm going to go get busy anyway. I'll check in with everybody later. Have fun diamond painting.